This video is sponsored by Carly, but we'll get on to using this later. Now, I'd be lying if I said I did all these builds on these cars without any help at all. Now, I made a lot of progress on the M4 in the last video, but there's a few things which I couldn't do myself. One of which was the windscreen. Obviously it was smashed from the airbag in the accident. So I got the guys from Screensaver in the Nita to pop down and pop in a new screen. A new screen for the BMW wasn't too expensive. You're looking around 300 pounds. And the guys were in and out in around half an hour. Yes, so now we have a fresh new windscreen. So shout out to those guys. And there's a reason why the M4 is on axle stands here, and that's because I had to call in some more old friends for a little bit of help. Now, if you remember when I picked up the M4, it was in a state, and the alloy wheels were absolutely battered. So I took them to the guys who always look after the wheels on the channel, and that is, of course, Alloy Fix in Romford. The damage on the wheels were pretty bad, and they were really buckled, but the wheels were welded, sandblasted, prepped, and then painted, and also diamond cut as well. And this is the result. Winner. The guys actually diamond cutted the wheels, then also tinted the face of the wheels, so they were slightly darker. I think it turned out perfect. Hello, Fix. You've absolutely smashed it with this one. How much better is the M4 looking now? It's completely transformed the car with just the wheels. So a massive shout out to Alloy Fix for bringing the M4 alloys truly back from the dead. I've put a link to their YouTube channel in the description box below. Let's get them to 5,000 subscribers. I heard they're gonna do a giveaway if they make it there. Come on, I know we can do this. Now, although the M4 is starting to look more like a drivable car now, it's not. We still have no power steering at all, which I think needs to be coded to the car. I still have a fair few lights and warnings on the dashboard, one being the driver restraint system and obviously the power steering. And of course, the headlights still don't work. Turns out these headlights are from the model above and they need rewiring and then coding to the car. So we may end up doing that or we may end up buying new headlights. And speaking of headlights, we have some issue with the Golf R headlights. Now we will be taking the Golf R out in this video to race it against some more supercars. But we can't do that just yet because it's still broken. Now in the last video of the Golf I said this would be the last time that it ever goes on my ramp. Well, I was wrong. Now when I picked up the Golf it obviously had a fully smashed in front end. So I had to buy two new headlights. And ever since installing those headlights I've never had full beam. I thought this was a coding issue, but turns out not. So this is with the headlights on. We've got the daytime running lights and we've got this sort of side light here. This is actually supposed to be the dip beam. When I press my full beam on, we get dip beam and obviously that is quite low to the ground and it's impossible to see on a country road at night. I thought this would be a coding issue, so I took it to VAG Code in Leicester, but they said the headlights that I've bought are for a model of Golf, which has a camera on the windscreen, which detects oncoming traffic. And as you can see, I have no camera on my windscreen. So the only option was to buy some new headlights, which costs 1,200 pounds. And this is what I look like after buying the headlights. Anyway, the proper headlights were bought and fixed back onto the car. Now obviously they're not all bolted up right, but I'm just gonna start it and see if they work. Now they may need code into the car, but if they work first time, we're on to a winner. Come on. We've got a dip beam, I think. Yes! <laughs> We've smashed it. I think we've smashed it. Yes, and the indicators work. 1,200 pounds later, and we're onto a winner. Time to fit the other one and check they both work. So far, it's fully working. Let's put this thing back together, and then we're gonna head to the track. Now, whilst he's out racing the golf on the racetrack, we need to talk about this little device here. Now, inside this box is a device called Carly. Connect car. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh no, another sponsored video. Skip, 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 skip. Well, just wait right there because this thing could actually save you time, money, and unlock a few cool things on your car, as well as this. Look, stop. I think I'll take over from here. 
but he is right. Now the M4 is a perfect car to use this on because as you can see, we've got tons of faults on the dashboard, including that restraint system fault, which I wanted to find out because obviously we fixed all the airbags. The device simply just plugs into your OBD port. Then you can just connect it with Bluetooth to your phone. I can open the app, scan for faults, and as you can see, there is quite a few on the M4. Now we can see the sort of severity of the fault by the list that it puts it in, but the one we're most interested in is the restraint system fault, which turns out to be the belt tighteners on the seats. So according to Carly, it does seem like we have to change the airbag tensioners, which are on the side of the seat. We can't just code it out and get rid of it. And also we've still got that code for the curtain airbag. So maybe I've not connected it quite right, but I can double check that now that I've seen it on this. But there's more. So along with the fault finding and diagnostic stuff, there's also coding on here. So I can actually unlock new features on the car as well. <laughs> and as you can see, it's sort of an overwhelming amount of features that I can unlock. But I chose to do this. Out of all the things that I changed, I changed the bong to not a BMW bong. I've now got a Rolls Royce bong. Check it out. <laughs> Yes. On top of that, you've also got all your maintenance features like your servicing, light reset, your battery reset, DPF regen, and so on and so forth. You also have a used car check as well, so you can plug it in and check the car's mileage is legit. But I think you guys get the picture of that. It's just really handy to keep this thing in the car. Whether you get an engine light come on the dash, you don't need to worry. Plug it in, check it on your phone, see what it is. Saves you time, saves you money, and gives you a nice bit of peace of mind as well. So to grab a Carly for your car, click the link in the description box below. There's also a discount code there to help you with a little bit of money off. Right, to the track. Okay, so the Golf R is back in familiar territory. The quarter mile drag strip. They told me to bring any car and we're gonna be racing it against supercars today. And I thought, because this car did so well against my Lamborghini in one of the previous videos, which is in the top right hand corner, I chose to bring the Golf. Let's see how it gets on against the supercars today. Let's do it. Well, it looks like I pulled the short straw on the first race because I'll be going against Ricky's McLaren 720S, which has 710 bhp against my Golf with 414 bhp. Okay, Golf R versus 720S. This is going to be embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this is not even worth it. I got absolutely battered. So the Golf takes a loss in the first race against the McLaren, but how will it tally up against a 4.7 litre V8 Aston Martin Vantage? The Vantage has 440 bhp and weighs 1.5 tonne, and the Golf has 414 bhp and weighs 1.4 tonne. But first, time for a sound test. Yeah, I think the Aston took that one. Come on, Golf, I know you got this. We've got to win one race today, surely. Surely. So the Golf takes a win over the V8-powered Aston Martin Vantage. But before I took on another V8, I realised I was being the biggest hypocrite of all because the whole time I've been wearing my V8 hoodie, which is available at mattarmstrong.co.uk. Or just click the link in the description. But now it's time for another V8. A 6.2-litre V8 in this Dodge Demon, which produces 808 horsepower on race fuel. Also stepping up to the start line will be this 410 horsepower BMW M2 Comp. Okay, third and final race for me and the Golf R today. Golf R versus BMW M2, which is completely standard, versus the Dodge Demons. Oh, it's gonna be a close one, it's gonna be a close one. Let's do it. So all three lined up and ready. Two rear-wheel drive cars versus the Golf's four-wheel drive. 
This could be interesting. Let's go golf! Oh my god, I wouldn't I would help if I go in a straight line. The dodge is coming though! Ah! <laughs> So the golf yet again takes a win against another V8. The Golf R is the ultimate straight line car. Don't race it unless you've got 720S. So the Golf would leave the track victorious today, beating the Aston Martin Vantage, beating the Dodge Demon, beating the BMW M2, but obviously losing to Ricky's McLaren. It's not about winning, it's about taking part. <laughs> a day it was for the golf art. It is finally all working, all back together. The headlights work, the adaptive cruise control works, and it is looking sick. And it is back on the track, doing what it does best, and destroying supercars. Now, right now, I'm in the Maserati, because you're going to find out what's happened to the golf art in the next video. But for now, I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. <laughs>